yeah! You're watching another legendary episode on YouTube channel Fagin' Thread! Yeah, baby! No agony, no agony. Hey, Brian oh. here. I hope this is the old cream. And today we're back with a special episode. We're back with our Axe and Shield. Uh, it's an ongoing series we do, and today we're going to cover the... Not eight. ongoing enough, because we missed it a few times on oh, other projects. Uh, certainly. <laughs> but uh, we've got our beaked or hard axe, and uh, basically what I've done here is I have people seen in other videos and uh, pretty much jumped on us saying, well, we've got our beard upside down like we don't know any better. Yeah. But the whole idea of the skagulx so or the beard is I have it up this way so I can use it to thrust with if I was fighting them in combat. Right. Uh, just like any beaked or hard axe, we have a double edge like uh, Ragnar uses in the Vikings. Right. Uh, but in this case, I have it this way a lot of times because I throw with it. This has a long handle, which isn't bad for throwing necessarily, but it can also be used for fighting one-handed. But uh, if you over-rotate, it sticks miraculously like that. It gives you the ability that if you over-rotate to the point of normally, if it hit with a flat like this, it wouldn't stick. This sticks in beautifully. Well, it also works great in combat, and that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about how you can hook the shield and use it to thrust into the exposed flesh. Like right. The, you neck. know where all the arteries are right. and all that's that, right. and the neck. Oh, it can be lethal, right? Very lethal. Incredibly lethal. And not only that, but any in other niches. Face. Yeah, oh, it'd be ugly in niches, too. Uh, any spots where maybe the uh, subclavian artery is, or any of your uh, humeral artery, anything in here. That it yeah. could possibly rip into. Or That's right, and they're so damage. close to the surface of the, of the subcutaneous layer that yeah, it could rip that. That alone could rip you open. Right, yeah. if there was an exposed area. That's right. right. So, and a lot of times the face was totally uncovered, maybe just a nasal. Uh, yeah, like the guy could choke on his own blood. <laughs> You're absolutely right. So, absolutely. So don't underestimate the damage of a technique. And we're going to test that damage, yeah. not just show you the technique. We'll even test how well it damages on different uh, mediums. So most certainly. So that'll be exciting. Let's get started. Oh, you've got uh, just to introduce this. He's got his Nordic axe from uh, Medieval Shop, and he's extended the handle. He's made a longer handle. It works much better with a shield for reach on a sword. That's the beauty of the Medieval Shop Nordic axe. A lot of times axe. it acts one against the sword. And we've yeah. showed that how you can disarm it. So well, I was going to say, you know, that's the great thing about Medieval Shop that I love is that when you get their products, a lot of times you can uh, customize them. I've even customized some of their sword products. Oh, and point up. Yeah, with point up. But yeah, but you can customize like I did here on this one. Uh, any of their products, like I said, one of their sword frogs, I modified that and it wasn't too hard to do. Oh, for your uh, for your sword? Yeah, yeah that's right. Certainly. But anyway, let's get started. All right, we're standing here with our center grip uh, flat shields, Viking rounds. Uh, there's a real common color period, old dramatic color period. Uh, and a lot of times when you fight with these, yes, you hold them at an angle. That's how you get your attacks. If I want to attack this side, I pretty much have to flip my shield. But let's say he's here and he's ready for me, he's used to me pushing on his shield. So if I'm going to push on his shield, what's going to happen? He can stop it if he wants. He can allow it to move. He can come around and i got to defend on this side. Because he's ready for this. But what a lot of times people don't uh, expect or underestimate is the idea that we're standing here. And what happens if the shield comes open? He now has something in here which I can step out. And you can't really see what I'm doing here, but I'm going to show you. I'm coming up under here like he was saying under arm. This could easily be in the throat, in the face. And it's a beautiful technique because, I mean, heck, I can just pretty much come over and pull down and slip it in. I don't know if you're seeing what's going on, but it's coming in. I'm just scared here because it's color, but I'm just barely holding it. But you can see the fear because this is scary. I mean, if you see it. Yeah, no, I get it. Believe me, I do. I'm here and I don't expect it. He comes over and hooks. Yeah, he's coming right into my... But that's the beauty of it, it's one motion. directly into my throat or whatever. But it's the beauty of the motion is that it's... Yeah, it's, it's one, it's, yeah. It's, 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 it's just quick. one, yeah. two. He doesn't have to pull it very far. Nope. It's just a light... Yeah, just to get it yeah. open, and then and that's it. it. Yeah. And, man, and a lot of times good. the axes are not expected to thrust with it. Even if you have the beak on or the horn, a lot of people will underestimate that or... I would assume at times in other state that somebody's going to try that. Uh, you know, and, and people complain about how much power this has. I think that's what needs to be tested here is not necessarily that you can pull it off, but how much do you get out of it? Oh, yeah, most certainly. So, I mean, we got some medium set up for that, right? Yeah, we'll test that out. And basically, we're just showing you how the technique occurs. It's just a hook. Yep. I mean, uh, we've showed hooking in all different kinds of ways and attacks, but this 
the hook to get inside, Whoa. and while I'm doing this, I can step yeah. in. Use your shield. Yeah, and see how I hold the shield out. Yeah. I've got him inside, and I can work him over thrust. I can thrust more than once. So oh, yeah. Him, I can sit here and just continually work him over. And the only thing he can do is try to get his shield, shield in and there push and it try out to push it out of the way and fight him to get him, get out of but it. But I'm more than certainly likely going to get at least the first one. Get a blow in if it's unexpected. So well, the first let's go ahead out. and test out the damage of this thing. I would say. That's yeah, exciting. Ooh, that was nice, Elgrim. And as Man. you can see, that ripped straight in there. Wow, the whole axe blade went inside. Ha <laughs> you hooked it. It's in there. There you go. That's beautiful. That's gorgeous. I'm I looking it. at the wound. That is nasty because the whole blade kind of cut in as he went through and it rocked that. Oh man. Very impressive. It looks like it kind of rocked, cut out the side too. So. Oh, I like it. It's very great. nice. And look very the nice. distance that I went from the overhooking motion back and in. Oh, most certainly you got a full thrust there. Yeah. Full power. I think you can do it. Let's try some other stuff. Yeah. Not bad in the That's brutal. Multiple layers, and we've got a good, uh, a good over a half inch, an inch and a half. Well, not half inch, but an inch and a half, easily. So that's going through multiple layers of cardboard. So we're looking at that stops stuff quickly. That's a very broad blade, but a broad blade causes more damage in a lot of ways, raw flesh. Pretty impressive. Hell yeah! Oh, nice. A nice penetration. Yeah, I think the difference in beard length makes a difference on my penetration for sure. Sure, that's why I like the one I've got as well, as well because the, the difference in the depth is because of the way it's shaped, whereas on yours, it just doesn't have, it's going to get too broad too quick. But still, the, the thrust power would be devastating to the face. It would shatter the bones. Uh, you know, I have to give Roller Wars Echo credit for changing the way I hold the shield and the way I manipulate More it. like a sword, correct? Yeah, I like, like the way... like a sword, actually, uh, pairing uh, and turning the... Uh, yeah, I like that. Access. So, thank you, Roland, for that. That really uh, improved my technique. Most certainly. Cool. Ah! Oh! So we got a pretty decent cut into the hook. Damn! I'll try it again. Eric doesn't have double metal. Ah! So what we got here? Another one. It's not bad. Not well, we're not going impressively deep. I don't think this was designed to pierce armor the shape of this. But we are still getting a cut and we're getting a nice impact. And it looks very devastating. I would not want to get hit in any exposed area or lightly armored uh, area that way, especially in the face. Hell or, no. Uh, the, the bar, uh, any, even the uh, collarbones or anything. Oh man, I think it would have shown. Man, that's kind of scary. Oh, that one was nasty. Yeah, it does pretty good. Well, if you want to see one more, it turn out. All right, I guess. I mean, yeah, pretty decent. That's not half bad. No, it's got a lot smaller protrusion too. It's still cutting into it. Oh, yeah, a lot too. I mean, not as much as yours, but still, that's pretty impressive. Through the walls that they build in my mind